Right. You mentioned earlier sort of how mobile application development is a, is a major um, field right now. How do you see the, I guess, the conflict between access providers and their users playing out? I mean, you look at all this bad press AT&T is getting because their network in New York is over, you know, overloaded with iPhone users and everybody else can't get on. Um, these companies seem very hesitant to invest the billions in the infrastructure. Where do you see that going? Well, first of all, I think it was a mistake for Apple and AT&T to enter an exclusive relationship. I mean, the iPhone is uh, the most, uh, uh, it's the richest device, the richest mobile device out there, so it makes perfect sense that, you know, people are going to do uh, things on that phone that they wouldn't do on other phones that are going to take up more bandwidth and, 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 uh, and I think it was a mistake for, um, Apple to align themselves with just one network. If they would have made that phone available on, on any network, then you would have had four network operators in this country uh, essentially competing with each other to provide the, the bandwidth um, uh, demands of, of the iPhone users. And, and I think the competition would have been healthy. And you know, maybe you know, Verizon's network was, was, was more capable of handling that. And, uh, and then iPhone users would have all moved to the Verizon network, which would have forced AT&T to respond, you know. And so I'm a big believer in open markets and open competition, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I don't buy the fact that, uh, that there's not an economic model for the wireless carriers. I think that um, if, uh, if you're an iPhone user and you can use an iPhone on any network, and uh, Verizon uh, went to the market and said, we're the most expensive wireless carrier out there for the iPhone, but we provide um, the best and most reliable and fastest network for an iPhone user, um, they would get plenty of users. And so I think that, you know, the, I, I really do believe that you can provide a, you can provide a, a better uh, and more reliable and, 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 and uh, higher bandwidth Network and you can and you can make a business around that. So, I think that uh, uh, we won't see um, Google make that mistake with Android. In fact, they're you know making Android available to any device manufacturer and any uh, mobile carrier who wants to partner with them. And uh, and I think that the iPhone will be uh, you know a um, Will, will not will not be a leading market share uh, device in two or three years because um, they're not going with that strategy. Just to follow on the it's sort of <coughs> infrastructural element of what he was mentioning about laying cables and stuff, you know, uh, I was thinking Google is trying this experimental one gigabit network. I don't know where they're going to put it or who's going to benefit from it or even if that's going to be turned into something larger. Um, maybe that'll put pressure on the others. Maybe it won't, but. If you're an entrepreneur who's coming up with ideas, or you have programmers who are coming up with ideas that will have great business ideas that will rely on that, but it's you don't know how many years out that's going to be, do they have to wait and just sort of develop because they won't have a prototype for a long time, or what's the what's the best? Yeah, well, to? that's a great question. I I definitely think that if you look back to uh, the late '90s, um, there was a lot of good ideas that were tried in the late '90s that didn't work. And I think they didn't work because we didn't have the bandwidth, uh, the broadband <coughs> connectivity, always on connectivity that we have today. Wi-Fi is a big part of that. Um, you know, I think that we're today so used to the idea that we can take a laptop or a mobile phone and we can roam around a building and be connected to high bandwidth internet because there's a bunch of wireless access points in the building. Um, and that kind of always on connectivity. I mean, you know, if you really think back to late 90s, or, you know, there were still a lot of people dialing up, right? You know, literally, you know, connecting to a phone line and dialing up to an internet connection and then using that internet connection for some period of time and then having to disconnect um, for whatever reason. And, and so, so the infrastructure has to be there for. Uh, a lot of these products and services to go mainstream. There was streaming video and streaming audio in, in the mid-90s. Uh, this company here in New York called Pseudo, um, founded by a really brilliant guy named Josh Harris, that was doing streaming audio and streaming video programs in 97 and 98. 
but nobody could watch them, right? So, you know, there was a really niche fringe group of people who would watch on dial-up or somehow had higher speed connections and, and you know, T1s at work or whatever and, and could, could take advantage of that, but it wasn't mainstream. YouTube comes along in 2005 and, uh, you know, the mainstream was ready for YouTube. Uh, and, and so, um, you know, that, that so, so, so all the people who developed, you know, a, a streaming video type service between 95 and 2002 or 2003, you know, failed or, or probably failed. There are a few, few companies like Heavy.com that was around in, in the late 90s and, and did succeed, but, you know, they went through some really, really tough times to, uh, to come out on the other end successfully. So, um, so, I, so I think if you're going to build something that, you know, requires, you know, gigabit, you know, uh, connections to the internet, that would not, I, I probably wouldn't invest in that. And I, I would probably not recommend that people spend a huge amount of their, uh, you know, savings to go, go build that kind of company. Do you think that infrastructure is going to keep up with the growth rates of online user bases? And what do you think the government's role in that is in lobbying groups? Uh, I'm an optimist on that one, partially just because I'm an optimist. And partially because I think that uh, there's a lot of profit in, 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 in supplying um, that infrastructure. And I think there's a lot of things that are out there on the horizon that are uh, potentially you know, game changers, particularly in and around wireless. Um, you know, one thing that um, is interesting to me is the whole area around the unregulated spectrum that Wi-Fi operates in. And um, so, I mean, if you think about uh, the wireless spectrum that, that we have available to us in this country, uh, most of it is owned, uh, has been auctioned off and is owned by either broadcasters in the cable, in the, in the TV and, and radio business, or mobile carriers. And they, um, and they operate the, the, that spectrum without any competition, right? So there's, no, there's nobody else providing <coughs> services on that, that spectrum. And that spectrum is massively underused. Um, and then you look at something like the unregulated spectrum that Wi-Fi operates in, and there's, wire, there's, there's wireless access points all over the place competing with each other. And yet, we've used software and semiconductor technologies and, and all kinds of you know, interesting uh, algorithms and, and, and technologies to make it so that all of these devices can communicate in a very crowded spectrum uh, without competing with each other. And so a massive amount of innovation has been unleashed in, in, in these unregulated spectrum. And, and, and that isn't very good uh, spectrum for uh, high bandwidth data. If we were to take you know, some of the spectrum that's out there in the hands of the wireless carriers or broadcast television companies and unregulated it and made it available for anybody to do anything the way we've done in the, uh, the uh, Wi-Fi spectrum, I think we would see a massive amount of innovation and you know, maybe gigabit wireless ethernet that could be provided for you know, a dollar a month. I mean, I don't know. I mean, any, anything is possible, I think, if, if people put their imagination to it and enough time and energy uh, into it. And so I think that the, 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 the government's policy around spectrum is horrible and, and, and is, is going to hold us back if, you know, if we continue to auction off the most valuable pieces of the spectrum to companies who want to run monopolistic businesses um, and use you know, a tiny, tiny piece of the usable spectrum because no, nobody else is allowed to operate. It'd be, it would be if you created a toll road and you know, only people who were allowed to drive on it would be UPS trucks. I mean, it's crazy. So that's, that's sort of my feeling about it.